Watch the news coming out of Israel and Gaza and you will see terrible images on both sides, families being ripped apart, people crying out for help. And you might also see that the number of casualties on the Palestinian side is higher and that Israel is stronger with its air force, its tanks and high-tech weapons. And you will see the poor people in Gaza carrying their belongings on donkeys. When you see these powerful images, it is very easy to be pro-Palestinian. And it is true. Israel is stronger and the Palestinians are weaker and suffering more casualties. But is this a whole story? If there are more casualties on the Palestinian side, does it mean that they are right? Is this the way to measure the conflict? I'm, I'm not so sure. Before I start, there is one point I want to make very clear. I'm truly sorry when innocent Palestinians who are not connected to Hamas or any of the other terrorist organizations get hurt or killed. And most Israelis are like me. If innocent Palestinians die, we will not be celebrating on the streets and handing out candy on the streets. Not in Israel and not in any Jewish community around the world. So if Israelis are such good and moral people, why are there so many casualties? One of the reasons you are so shocked by what you are saying is that you probably don't know what war is. When I see what's on the news in the West, can a man who feels like a woman compete against biological females in, in sport and the pronoun thing? I like to have a laugh about it, but I actually really envy you. If this is all you are dealing with, man, your life is just hunky-dory. Your life is a cold beer on a hot day. I'm not justifying the killing of civilians in any way, but war is hell. Let me tell you something you probably didn't know. We also shoot our own soldiers. When you have the air force, the artillery, the tanks and infantry, we often shoot at one another and accidentally kill one another. It is tragic and the Israeli army does its best to prevent it, but it does happen. And it happens not just in Israel, but in all armies and all wars in Kosovo, in Ukraine, in Iraq. If you compare the civilian casualty ratio for Israel and other Western armies, you will actually see that Israel's numbers are lower. War is a terrible thing, but we are fighting for our lives and we are fighting for something we strongly believe in, the existence of a democratic Jewish state. I won't go into the history of the conflict. I've already done that in previous videos, but I just want to show you one picture, which to me sums it all up. Most Israelis don't know this picture and the story behind it. On the 29th of November, 1947, the UN said, okay, let's divide the land into a Jewish state and an Arab state. The Jews wanted it all for themselves and the Arab wanted it all for themselves. The Jews were willing to compromise and said yes. And the Arabs said no. And the first thing they did was to shoot at this bus and murder five Jews. They were offered a state, they said no, and they started killing Jews. This is the start and the heart of the matter. And nothing ever changed. Today, as in 1947, Israelis cherish life and are willing to compromise, and Hamas, Hezbollah, and many of their friends cherish death. It is not just my opinion. They say it about themselves. They say that they will win because they love death like we Israelis love life. We Israelis say the opposite, that we will win because we love life more than they love death. In the Hamas constitution, they say that jihad is the path and dying for God is their greatest wish. In the Israeli Declaration of Independence, it says, we extend our hand to all neighboring states and their peoples in an offer of peace and good neighborliness. Can you hear the difference between the Muslims and the Jews between we want to die in jihad and we offer our hand in peace? This is important because the Palestinians live by their values. I hate it when Westerners say, oh, they are only saying that because they are poor and living under harsh conditions. That is a patronizing view. Don't patronize. The Palestinians truly believe in jihad and they educate their children this, this way. Would you send your children to this kindergarten? This isn't even an extreme example. When the media talks about the hundreds of children dead in Gaza, they almost always show you the little girl who died. They never talk about the hundreds of 16 to 17 year old terrorists 
who die in combat but are still counted as children? Think about it. When have you ever seen a graph of the ages of the children who died on the BBC? It would take seconds to make. You have never seen it because most of them are 16 and 17 year old fighters and that doesn't fit the narrative. I'm using the BBC as an example, as of all the major respected media groups, the BBC is considered in Israel to be the most anti-Israel, but you know, there are others. Another reason why there are so many Palestinian casualties and another fundamental difference between Israel and Hamas is that Israel does everything it can to protect civilians and children. Israel developed the Iron Dome system and air defense system that intercept rockets. This is an amazing photo in which you can see Hamas launching dozens of rockets aiming at civilians. And on the other side, you can see Iron Dome rockets. Each Iron Dome rocket knows which Hamas rocket it is going to intercept. This system was developed thanks to the US. So if you are from Wisconsin or one of the other 49 states, thanks. On the other hand, let me show you what Hamas does. They shoot a rocket and gather children next to it so that if the Israelis shoot back, their children get hurt and they can say that Israel is barbaric. Hamas shoots rockets from schools and hospitals and uses women and children as human shields. And now I will say something that some of you won't like. If you shoot at me from a school or a hospital or from a gay parade, I will shoot back. If your moral standards are so low that you intentionally put your own children at risk, then their blood is on your hands. Israel does more than any other army in the world to warn civilians. Let me give you another example that Israelis and Palestinians know about, but the BBC probably hasn't told you about. Let's say that Israel finds out that Hamas is storing missiles in a building where there are civilians. Instead of bombing the whole building up before Hamas starts shooting the rockets, Israel does what is called knocking on the roof, where they shoot a few rounds at the roof to let people know they should get out of there. And only then do they bomb the building. I'm really curious to know if that's something you were aware of. Please let me know in the comments below. As far as I know, you can see a thousand reports from Gaza, but the media will not talk about it. Just because the Palestinians are weak and we are strong, it doesn't make them morally right. Weakness is not a virtue. There is the argument, which I find to be really unconvincing, that the Arabs have no other option because they are so weak. What can they do? They are no match for, for our tanks. To answer this, I want you to meet my grandfather. My grandfather was in the Palmach, one of the paramilitary Jewish groups that fought against the British from 1945 to 1948. My grandfather broke into British military bases to steal weapons. He blew up bridges and railways. Here is a list of what he and his friends didn't do. He didn't rape British women. He didn't kill British children. He didn't kill British civilians. My grandfather is a nice guy. No, seriously, the Jewish organizations who fought the British, the British Empire, didn't kill civilians. You can be both weak and moral. Now, at this point, all those who disagree with me will be jumping up and saying that I'm lying and that the Etzel, one of the Jewish organization, blew up the King David Hotel, which proves that the Jews aren't as moral as they say they are and that the Jews were like the Hamas. I have two responses to that. The first is that the King David Hotel was used by the British Army as their main office building. So despite its name, King David Hotel, it was a legitimate military target. There was no music festival at the hotel in 1947. And Etzel also gave a warning before they blew it up. But the British commander said that he didn't take orders from Jews. And the second thing is that there are always exceptions. I'm not claiming that Jews are perfect or saint-like. A few years ago, an ultra-Orthodox Jew murdered a teenage girl at a gay parade in Jerusalem. Does that mean that ultra-Orthodox Jews kill secular Jews? No. Does that mean that it's dangerous to be gay in Israel? No. This is an extreme example that shows how the opposite is the norm. There have been a few incidents where Jews have intentionally killed Arab civilians. These events are very rare. On the other hand, Hamas and other Palestinian organizations carried out thousands of attacks on Jewish civilians. 
before the State of Israel was established and after it was established, before the occupation and after the occupation, before Israel withdrew from Gaza and after Israel withdrew from Gaza. As I said, they love death. I find the West so naive. You keep sending them money and hoping for development and less hatred. Give them more money and more support and they will build more rockets and spread more death. A chicken doesn't give you milk just because you feed it hay. Does Hamas represent all Palestinians? No, but two important notes. Hamas is not a small organization that took over Gaza. Hamas is part of a huge Muslim movement called the Muslim Brotherhood, which has hundreds of millions of Muslim supporters in the Muslim world. What percentage of the Palestinians support Hamas? It is hard to say because they are not great fans of democracy and election, but it is a fair amount. And now I'm going to say something that some of you will find extreme and offensive. So trigger warning, are you ready? The Palestinians are also responsible for their situation. Take the Germans. Today in Germany, it is unacceptable to say that the Nazis were a small group, only 37%, so technically a minority, and that most of the Germans were nice, normal people, and only the Nazis who worked in the death camps were responsible for the Holocaust. It is not acceptable because it is not true. Did all Germans kill Jews and Russian prisoners of war? No but they were all responsible for it. It's the same with the Palestinians. The West tends to treat the Arabs with kid gloves as victims of the circumstances, which is actually very patronizing. The Palestinians brought Hamas on themselves. They support Hamas and its values of war and death, and they have to live with the consequences of what they have done. When you are watching the news from Gaza, you have to remember that Hamas controls everything you see from Gaza, Go to the BBC website, look at their videos from Gaza. Look at 50, 100, 500 videos. And tell me if you find a single video in which someone in Gaza criticizes Hamas. Don't you find that strange or even suspicious that no one says anything bad about Hamas? And the reporters don't ask any hard questions. It's always the same. Tell us how much of a victim you are and how bad the Israelis are. If you want to find an Israeli who criticized the Israeli government, it wouldn't take you very long. I think the Israeli government should resign, not because of the crisis, which would have happened under any government anyway, but because of how they responded in the first week after the attacks, or rather how they didn't respond. They disappeared from view and were completely dysfunctional. The title of this video is why there are so many Palestinian casualties, but the fact is that the real number of Palestinian civilians casualties is very low. You hear so much about it, not because the numbers are high, but because it is safe for journalists to be there, because Israel is a democracy and you can stand in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and criticize Israel. If you zoom out for a second, you will see that the highest numbers of civilian casualties in recent years have been in Sudan, Yemen, and Syria, where there are no cameras. And this is something else that the media isn't talking about. The Gaza Strip is a gold mine for the foreign press. You can eat the cake and avoid the calories. You can show war and remain relatively safe. Israeli strikes are very precise and often, as I said, Israel give warnings before it sends its bombs. If foreign reporters were truly honest, they would start every report from Gaza like this. You know, first put on their serious face and then say, Thank you, BBC London, for sending me here and not to a place where real atrocities are happening. I could die if I were somewhere like Syria or Yemen, Sudan or Iraq. I will now show you what Hamas wants me to show you. I hope I've given you some points to think about when you hear reports from Gaza. This just happened as I was editing this video. The hospital in Gaza was bombed. The BBC immediately blamed Israel. First, they blame us and put the word out. Now we know that it was actually a Palestinian rocket. The BBC will not call Hamas a terrorist organization, but it is prepared to immediately accuse Israel for the death of hundreds of civilians. This is one more way to make you believe that Israel is killing children, lying and not checking the facts. Shame on you, BBC. And one last comment. I've been getting some criticism for not providing evidence that support what I say. And it is true, I, I don't. 
And the reason for that is that everything I say is pretty basic. There is a site I like, it's called Google. You can head there and Google many of the things I said. The 1947 partition plan, the Iron Dome system, the Israeli declaration of independence, can chickens give you milk, roof knocking, that terrible, terrible war in Yemen, in the Hamas constitution. That is actually a really good idea for a pro-Israel video, just reading the Hamas constitution. Nothing would make them look worse than showing what they say about themselves. If you want to help, please consider donating to Israelis who have lost their homes. I will leave a link below. My next video is going to be about the very weird connection between the left, the Palestinians, and the Muslim world. If you find that interesting, please consider subscribing. See you in the next one. Yalla bye.